Okay, answers to the test for chapter 8, multiple choice portion. Um, number 1, have a, uh, had a right triangle like this, and then you had an altitude cutting it, and this altitude is, uh, is, a, makes, is perpendicular. And they told you that this side was 10, and this side was 5, and they wanted you to solve for x, y, and z. And there were two uh, shortcuts from 8.1, that's what this question's from. And we said that the altitude squared is the same thing as the two parts of the hypotenuse multiplied together. And that's really the only thing you had to do for this question. The other shortcut was that the leg squared equals part of the hypotenuse times the whole thing. And there were a couple questions like this on the search and rescue. So altitude is this, this segment right here. So if we square it, 5 squared, it should equal the two parts of the hypotenuse multiplied together. And if you look at this, this is what I'm talking about, the hypotenuse of the whole right triangle. So 5 squared should equal 10 times x. 5 squared is 25, and then you divide both sides by 10, and you got that, that x equals um, 2.5. And B was the only correct answer, the only answer where x equals 2.5, so you really didn't even have to use this formula at all. You could, if you wanted to, um, plug it in and do more work, but you didn't have to. Number two. Number two um, was just like number one. So we have a right triangle. And they tell you that this altitude is 2.5, oh, I'm sorry, 25 feet, and that this part was 6, and they wanted to know how long is this whole entire thing. I'm going to call it Y. So to figure it out, I'll first find out what X is, but I can't use Pythagorean's theorem. So since they give you the altitude, we're going to use that the altitude squared equals the two parts of the hypotenuse multiplied together. And again, this is from section 8.1. So what you're going to do is 25 squared, since that's the altitude, equals 6 times x. And you solve, and you get that x equals 104 feet, which is one of the answer choices. But we wanted to figure out what the whole thing was. So what you had to do was plug in 104, add 6, and really your answer should have been 110 feet. So if you got 104, you were super close, but you needed to plug it in. So that was number two. Number three. Um, number three, I'm pretty sure most people got this one correct. Just wanted you to find GH, which is the hypotenuse. So we want to figure out what the hypotenuse is. They give you 35 degrees, and they tell you that this side is 18.4. So you have to figure out if you're going to use sine, cosine, or a tangent. And um, since 18.4 is adjacent, you're going to use cosine. And we have the hypotenuse, so it should have been cosine of 35 degrees equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And when the variable is on the bottom, all you have to do is flip the two. So you, it's x equals 18.4 over cosine 35. And you could use your calculator, and you should have gotten c, um, which is 22.46 inches. Okay, number four, a lot of people, um, this was the same question that you guys had for your numeric response. It said find a tan of 60 degrees and use a special right triangle. So it couldn't really just pop it in your calculator. Again, the shortcut is that thir for a 30, 60, 90 triangle is this side is 1x. The hypotenuse is always 2x. And across from the 60 degrees is always x radical 3. So once you have that drawn, 60 degrees is here. Tan stands for TOA. So tan of 60 degrees equals opposite over adjacent. So the opposite side would be x radical 3. The adjacent side would be 1x. The x's cross out, and you're left with just radical 3 over 1. So that was the answer. Number 5, and it said use a tr write the trig ratio for cosine x as a fraction. And then triangle was like this. And here was x. And it was hypotenuse was 15, the opposite side was 9, and the adjacent side was 12. Cosine um, of x is the same thing as the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So adjacent would be 12, hypotenuse would be 15. Um, 
it's up 12 over 15, and you can reduce that, but it didn't really ask you to. So that's how you do number five. Number six. Write the, use the true ratio sine A equals 0 0.38 to figure out where angle A is. So we have this triangle that looked like this. They called this angle 2, this angle 3, which was 90 degrees, so it's not going to be an answer. And angle 1, they told you this is 1.3 and this is 0 0.5 and this is 1.2. You're going to use the fact that they give us sine to compare opposite sign is the same thing as opposite over hypotenuse, right? So let's say we wanted to find the sine of angle 2. Well, that would be 0 0.5 because that's opposite over the hypotenuse, which is 1.3. If you put this into your calculator, do you get 0 0.38? Yes, you do. And since they have the same ratio, that means that angle 2 equals angle A. Number 7 was pretty straightforward. Um, they wanted you to find out what the measure of angle M was, so you need to use inverse SOHCAHTOA. And they gave you all of the tri uh, triangle measures. I'm sorry, they gave you all the side lengths. That was supposed to be right angle, excuse me. Let me redraw it so it doesn't confuse you guys. So here was the triangle. Here's the right angle. So this one's 51, so this is the hypotenuse, and 45, and 24, and here was M. So you could use whichever uh, trig function you like. I really like sine, so I put in inverse sine. Sine is always opposite 45 over hypotenuse. So that's what you did. Put it in your calculator, and you should have gotten 62 degrees. If you wanted to use inverse cosine, cosine is adjacent, so that would have been 24 over the hypotenuse, which is 51. And if you really like tan, that's opposite, which is 45 over adjacent. If you plug in these three um, ratios into your calculator, you're still going to get 62 degrees no matter what. Number eight. Some mountains in the Alps are very steep and have a grade of 42.7 percent. What angle does the mountain make with the horizon or the horizontal line? So 42.7 percent is the same thing as 42.7 over 100. And remember this is slope, so rise over run. So that means this is 42.7 and this is 100 in our right triangle, and you want to find this angle, so you're going to use inverse tan since they give you opposite over adjacent, and when you put that in your calculator, you get 23 degrees. Okay, so 42%, remember, think of it as rise over run, and that'll help you get your cap, um, right triangle. Number nine, to the nearest degree, what is the measure of the smallest angle of a right triangle? So this is important, smallest angle. Um, with the legs that measure 9 and 15. So this is what we have so far of our triangle. You don't really need to know the hypotenuse. Pick an angle, any angle, and then solve for it. So you're going to have to use inverse tan because we have opposite over adjacent. And when you put that into your calculator, let's see, tan negative 1, 15 divided by 9, you get 59 degrees. And so some people, if you put 59 degrees, you were super close, but go back. They wanted the smallest angle. So if this one's 59 degrees, we can figure out that this angle has to be 31 degrees because all angles add up to be 180 degrees. So your answer should have been 31 degrees. Number 10. And 10 was really straightforward. Classify each angle as angle of depression or elevation. If you didn't know how to do number 10, please look back at um, 8.4 notes. It's pretty straightforward. Number 11 and 12 were a little bit more difficult. Number 11, it says that this pyramid is 146.2 meters high, and when this person stands away from the pyramid, her angle of elevation is 20 degrees. At the ground, what is the horizontal distance? between the person and the center of the pyramid. And that confused some people, but you can think of the picture like this. Here's our pyramid, the center of it. So we still have, there's, this is my pyramid, <laughs> and this is the, where the person's staying. So we still have a right triangle. You're going to have to use tangent because we have opposite and adjacent. So tan of 20 equals 146.2 over x. When x is on the bottom, all you do is swoop them 
So 146.2 divided by tan 20, you can put that in your calculator, you should have gotten A, 402 meters. That was number 11. Number 12, an eagle is 300 feet in the air, spots its prey. The angle of depression, that's important. Angle of depression is 15 degrees. Here's its prey. I want to know how far away is the eagle from its prey. There's my eagle. If this is 15 degrees, you could say that this is 15 degrees. And then we can set up our trig ratio. So tan of 15 equals opposite over adjacent. Again, flip these two. And you could put x equals 300 over tan 15. Now, some people don't like doing it that way. That's fine. This is always going to be a right angle. So instead of 15, you could have used 75 degrees. And then you could have used tan of 75 equals opposite over adjacent. And then the opposite of dividing by 300 is multiplying. Um, but it's up to you. you could, either way, you're still going to get that the answer should have been 1,120 feet, or A. Now, number 12. Okay, the last one, number 13, this is again on that worksheet, standard uh, 19 worksheet we did in class. Which of the following is true? Should have been D, sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine squared x. Because the formula we're um, coming from is cosine squared plus sine squared is always going to equal 1. And all they did was um, got the sine squared by itself. And to do that, they just subtracted the cosine squared x from both sides. So D was the correct answer.